Uh, you see, you've, got that, you've got that look on your face because you know you're winding me up. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All your problems what's, are gone. And then what's your problem then, Paul? Yeah, my problem with this is that page load time is like this proxy for all your performance problems are sorted. No, no, and again, once again, no, right? Here's, I've got two major issues right now. One is, to get good page load time, people defer everything to DOM content loaded. Right, and they or, ah. or body load or whatever, and they, they they create. I like to think of it as like a 9 a.m. rush hour problem. They all go, you know what we should do? We should make sure the roads are all clear until 8:45, and then everybody should go on the roads. So, so what's the effect of this that you're seeing? Is that like as you as the page loads up, it has a a moment of jank? More than a moment, actually. It's <laughs> like honestly, it can be several, at least several seconds, because we know that when. People first hit a page, the first thing they try and do is tap or scroll, or some kind of interaction. And it's the very time that we've all chosen to do all our work. Yeah. And, and it, it drives me mad. This is, this is not, a, you, know, you can get a good first paint and then completely hose the user's expectation by doing this. And then the, the other thing that bothers me is this kind of, disregard for anything that happens after page load. Like, I've got it on the screen. It's now the browser's problem. If it doesn't scroll well, if it doesn't transition well, if it doesn't stick to finger when they're interacting in some way. Well, 50% of the answer will be, have you tried virtual DOM? So VDOM, all right, fine. I think VDOM is, is actually a very clever idea because I think what it's doing is it's making sure you don't shoot yourself in the foot. This is the key to it. I don't know, when, when people say that to me, it feels like, you know, I say, oh God, my train journey takes quite long. It's, it's like 40 minutes. And people say, ah, oh, have you tried wearing better running shoes? And it's like, well, I'm still gonna be then on the train, train. Yes. with those running shoes. And so if uh, things like React that do the virtual DOM thing, they are still going to work with the DOM. Yeah. Like if, you're, if you have 100 elements to create on a page, that will be slower with React. Yeah. Because React is on the top. Yes. And, and, and also, I've seen timeline traces where all the work was React. That's not React's fault, but it struck me that the developer may be thinking, well, essentially all the work I do in React, or all the work I do with VDOM, it's free. It's only the bit at the end that I have to pay the cost on. But where, but where things like React really come into their own is where you can just sort of, you can create a whole load of new objects to represent the DOM and say, this is what it should look like. Right. And you, you can write your code really naively and React will cater for that. And rather than create a whole set of corresponding DOM elements, it will take what's already there, move that one around, change the order, right. and just create the new stuff it needs. And that's, and, and that's the sort of practical performance benefit. It's not the DOM that's slow, it's kind of your, your use of it. I think, exactly, it's very much your use of it. I think it's, a, it's very nice to have the headlines that like, the DOM is slow, or always use CSS animations, but it, no, because it, it completely misses the nuance. It's just something I've been kind of exploring more and more recently is that, you know, displaying what looks like a complete interface, but it's not actually ready. Is, it, is that okay? Is that something you... Yeah. You, is it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it, so long as the thing that they want to interact with will work. Hmm. Right? And this is the problem with, well, what, what Apple recommend with their, because they, because they have only a few dimensions of, uh, of phones. You can, you can include essentially a screenshot for every device as your initial render. And, uh, and the problem with that is it won't be clickable. So I think what they recommend is just something that has the, the colored what, bars and stuff. Yeah. I think we should be doing more of that on the web. Yeah. Like not with bitmaps, because you know, Windows can be any, any size, but, but something with just a very small blob of CSS a little bit of HTML and Flexbox or whatever, just to do yeah, some of the basic, bones. basic yeah. layout. Yeah, I think that's absolutely fine. Like that has to be part of it. It's the per perceived performance is a huge part of this whole discussion. Mm. And I think as service worker is more widely used, as we get to this kind of fast bootstrapping offline -y world where th people are sort of tapping on things from their home screen, well, it's, it's all this bit afterwards yeah. that actually is going to shape user expectation. That's the bit they're going to notice. They're going to decide whether or not to use your thing, not because of how quickly it loads, because that'll be a fraction of a second, probably, but it'll be all that other stuff afterwards. It says, what do they care about? What do they actually notice? What do they perceive? And that's the thing to target. And of course, on the developer side, there's the idle stuff. There's that kind of, what can we actually give to the user to make them feel like they're getting the right response in the right time? But it may be that it's a bit of sleight of hand on our part, for sure. Mm.